We're just coming into downtown Chillicothe, the seat of Ross County, a really historic community settled in the late 18th century, 1796, by a settler named Nathaniel Massey. And Nancy, it has some of the best architecture in the state, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Not just the downtown area, but the residential areas. A lot of early 19th century architecture that you don't see in a lot of historic communities throughout the state. We're going up the hill, the big hill that's on the west side of uh, downtown Chillicothe. We're going up to visit a place called Mountain House, and we're going to be meeting Dart Hunter. This is the old family home. I've been looking forward to making this visit. Here we go. It is quite a house. <laughs> Hi, Dart. Hi, Nancy. Welcome. Thank you so much for having us. Oh, my pleasure. Hi, Jeff. We are so Hi, excited to get this tour well, today. Shall we take a look? Absolutely. Come on in. Uh, I've been here once or twice, but uh, there's always another story to tell, isn't there? Right. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. This is wonderful. Oh, yeah. It's a great old house. Oh, look at this. Yeah, this was really the last room that my grandfather created when he uh, did his renovations in 1920 mm -hmm. after purchasing the house in 1919. These stained glass windows look like paper making? They are. They really uh, kind of study the history of printing and paper making. And these were made by your grandfather? My grandfather made these between 1925 and 1930. For this space? For this space. For his library. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then he was a figure in the arts and crafts movement. He the Roy was. Crofters, it's, it's all sort of the same thing, I think. Isn't that correct? That's correct. He uh, did many graphic designs, made all the leaded glass windows for the Roy Croft Inn. Uh, he made pottery and jewelry. And, but there was one component missing from uh, that which the Roy Crofters were doing, and that was handmade paper. So they were publishing books much the way it would have been done you know, in medieval times, and they had a medieval look because they were importing papers from Europe. Mm -hmm. He thought that was kind of a tragedy. So he spent the rest of his life, really from 1911 on, doing nothing but studying the history of paper making, mm -hmm. as well as uh, collecting artifacts from around the world on how other cultures had made paper. Do you have any other elements of the past you'd like to share with us? We do. We have several in the studio. Would you like to come Fantastic, in? Fantastic, of course. That's where all the work gets done. Yes. Oh, look at this so space. So this is the studio that my grandfather created. Oh, my gosh. Uh, he chose these two Washington hand presses to use to produce all of his books. Really the same principle that Gutenberg would have had, a very simple platen that comes down to make the impression. That's remarkable. And then you, when you're printing, it's one page at a time. That's correct. I've pulled the last book that my grandfather produced here, oh. uh, Paper Making by Hand in America which all eight books that he produced here were on different aspects wow. of paper oh. making. So this was really his magnum opus. What a beautiful book. A lifetime oh, gorgeous. achievement uh, in the study wow. of paper making in America. So, and even the margins around it, it's almost like a border on a work of art. It just calls your So there were 210 life. copies of this book produced, all on paper that he had made wow. in his Lime Rock, Connecticut That's just paper mill. Remarkable. And this is the mold that my grandfather used to make the paper uh, for the book. So this is a, an early European mold uh, with a removable decal uh, with a laid uh, wire covering with this watermark. So anywhere we have this, uh, we take wire, stitch it to the mold surface, mm -hmm. and that will create slightly less pulp in these areas, creating a shadow. So the pulp is the ground up rags and water, correct. and uh, it's kind of a slurry that you... It is a slurry. You, we you dip, dip into the, uh, dip the it, vat, okay. and we shake it in all directions, so there's no grain direction in handmade paper. Aha. Uh -huh. So... What a process. Tremendous. Are these watermarks back here? These are watermarks that were made in the same paper mill that he made uh, the paper for that book. He was really trying to encourage sales of handmade paper, which during the Depression was quite a hard commodity to sell. I'm sure So it he was. was offering custom watermarks. Paper making is still part of what you do here? You still it is. Paper? It is. We, we think it's, it's very important to continue okay, and that. then you do the printing, and you must have other, other lines of business as well that, we, that build on that tradition? We do. We actually started uh, uh, a business called Dart Hunter Studios. We work with a lot of artists around the country uh, who are working in the same styles of, of design as the arts and crafts movement, and uh, we do that in our studio downtown. And we'll be seeing that a little bit later. You will, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, what a, what a building. What well, a thank space. Thank you. Thank you. 
This is really interesting. Tell us, tell us about the building first. Well, uh, this was built originally as a canal warehouse ah. uh, serving the Ohio Erie Canal. The canal came to the rear of the building. Boats would actually dock right against the building and they would unload and store their dry goods in the building. And then from 1900 until 1950, the uh, electric company had purchased it. And they installed all the cabinetry throughout the building, which worked out perfectly, perfectly for our use. For you. Yeah. yeah, so it, it really couldn't have been a better building for us. So this is where you have your offices, um, but also your, your sales room. Your, your, I mean, people, people can visit here, make purchases. That is, is that correct, right? okay. yes. Okay, well, let's, let's see the uh, sales room. Yeah, come on in. So this is the home oh, yeah. of Dard Hunter Studios. Yes. That's actually what you call it. And right. these were all here, and yes. it's perfect. So yes. it's tile? Tell it, us about This is the all tile. ceramic tile. Some of it incorporates my grandfather's graphic designs. We collect a lot of different uh, tile makers around the country. And then we work with uh, other artists doing pottery, one doing the clocks. We have a line of china that uh, bear my grandfather's designs and that we make actually the frames here. What's well, interesting how the designs from almost, what, over 100 years ago can also look very contemporary today. That's and true. there's still a great deal of interest in the arts there, and crafts movement. There is, we've been very fortunate to have a great deal of support uh, nationwide, yes. Yeah, it's, well, it's a, it's a wonderful story and it's a wonderful legacy that you're carrying on. Thank you. Dart, it's been just really great visiting. Thank you so much for, for having well, us today. Well, thank you. I it's really been a fascinating this. visit. Thank you, it's Nancy. just, we love Chillicothe. This really added to the experience of a great historic city wow. to actually get the story of your family and this beautiful art. Drilling down to some of those local stories is just one of the, one of the best things. Right, well, I always enjoy telling them, so thank you. Mm -hmm.